Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at uh, the new or the latest version of my uh, tractor control board or really any vehicle kind of control board. So the way I've done it now is you have the kind of the brains of the operation, the radio module and the chip that's controlling everything based on uh, the Arduino code. And then a, in this case a dual motor driver or actually a quad motor driver so we've two uh, motor driver chips on the PCB so we can drive four motors so to show you how it works what I have here is a disassembled CQ control 32 fin 939 and uh, I've added a few extra servos I have a kind of a test rig built up here I guess and um, basically one of these boards is here uh, the single motor driver version is here uh, but we're not going to use that today, we're just going to look at the quad motor driver. I have a row of LEDs here, but we're not going to use that. Uh, but, uh, basically, we're going to just show you uh, all the functions of the board as they're set up here, here and how you might use them in a vehicle. So, the first thing we're going to do is just hook on our control chip to our motor driver. So, it's only a matter of plugging it in. So you can plug this out, go and program it, come back to your vehicle and just plug it in. That's as simple as that is. I think that's a lot easier than the other version where you had to try and get the uh, programming wire into the vehicle some way. So let's program, plug it into uh, our test rig here. So that's as simple as it is. We plug in our board, it's already programmed and we're wired up to everything now. So next thing we're going to need is our controller so we'll turn that on I'm also going to use this trailer to demonstrate that we can obviously control the trailer so just connect it up I just need ground and signal wire because we're going to power the tractor from this uh, LiPo battery here so power that up so the tractor's powered up you can probably see the beacons are flashing underneath the cab there it's all a little hard to uh, hard to set up because I have everything kind of temporarily wired in here. So I don't know if you can see the screen here, but we want. I have. I'm using the code as the Fent 936, so it's actually a Fent 939, but obviously that doesn't matter. So uh, first things first, our basic controls: speed of our motor, nice variable speed control, because. We're using the hardware PWM there, uh, our steering servo, so hopefully you can see that spinning. So that's our kind of basic drive functions that we've seen on everything. Now this model has a loader which is slightly different, so the way I've done that, normally we have throttle forward and back here, steering left to right. So on the left to right on this joystick it's... Uh, raising and lowering the loader and on the forward and reverse on this it should change the bucket and this is only software PWM I've ran out of hardware PWM ports so but you can see there's still fairly good uh, slope speed control there and obviously if you want fast it's fine So although it's not a proper hardware PWM there, I think it's still uh, more than adequate for that job. So the next thing we're going to want is our uh, rear link servo, so that's standard on the CQ. So here's the CQ, uh, CQ servo, and you can see we have our control of that. Not a problem. Then for a front link servo, we have another servo here. So just to recap, we have drive motor steering we have two motors for the loader and feedback so there's uh, we're reading back two pins here are reading the voltage for the feedback so giving you a uh, position feedback of the loader and then we have two servos for front and rear link um, let's go for the bailer then so we're hooked up the same way we always do and let's see what's the function of this I think it's just this okay so that's Raising and lowering the spool there. Uh, this one should open the rear door. So that's our two uh, two bales dropped there. Fairly simple. Um, next thing then, we'll take a look at our lights. So 
uh, if you've watched this channel before you'll know that CQ wire there lights so that uh, the positive is always connected to the positive rail whereas when I wire mine I nearly always connect the ground to the ground rail so uh, the code that I'm using is actually switching this backwards but it's not a big deal to change that I just haven't changed it yet I was more interested in getting the loader and that stuff that we hadn't done before working so like I said uh, your beacons are flashing away there can you see that yeah I think you can just about see one of them there on the camera I'm trying not to unplug the wires you see so uh, that's running one of the cycles if I remember correctly there's two different modes in the code for that um, I just can't remember it was like two years ago when I wrote this so I think there's two different codes but anyway that doesn't matter you can write whatever kind of flashing sequence you want it doesn't really matter you're just turning on two outputs so let's put on our indicators here so have our hazards on there and you can hopefully see our hazards flashing there okay so we'll turn them off and like I said uh, my pins are going to ground so when I turn them off it turns the pin low on the chip which means that the current is now flowing from the high rail on uh, the CQ model here to the ground through the chip so that's why the lights are on when they're off it's only a matter of uh, putting a, I think it's a is it bitwise bitwise knot operation in the uh, in the code to reverse that so it's not a big job to change that so you can see our brake lights are on uh, or not our brake lights our tail lights I mean that's because the lights are off you can see we've no lights on the monitor there so or on the, the display here so if I turn on the lights the brake lights will actually go off because if it was my code they'd be coming on you know it's a little bit hard to uh, wrap your head around but you can see clearly that they're changing there you can see that one anyway that is indicators and brake lights that's all we have on the back so let me try and turn this around without unplugging everything so you can see our headlights there uh, that's giving the off signal so because with the CQ thing it's reversed it's coming on full lights so if I hit it once uh, we're now pulse width modulating the lights so that's supposed to be our dipped headlights and if I go for full beams it turns them off because the CQ thing is reversed now if we look down here our uh, work lights on the top of the cab there they are on because uh, the chip is telling them it's off and flick that it turns them on although it looks to be some sort of a problem because it looks to be still slightly on I think I think we have a bad connection there somewhere it's not that surprising that there's a bad connection you can see all the resistors here it's not wired in properly obviously that's another thing uh, the resistors aren't on the boards in this model so if you are rewiring them you'll have to add in your own resistors so that's basically the lights now we still have I think it's uh, one, two, three, you have four outputs we've still four unused outputs but you're only really going to be able to use them for LEDs I think well uh, that's because they're coming from the expansion ships but there probably is uh, some libraries there that you can you know modify those outputs to control more than just these basic uh, or more than just on off LEDs maybe you can get a pulse width modulation from the um, from the expansion chip but I, I've never done that before so and I've no real need for it uh, I can't really think of why you would need as many or any more lights or controls of lights like you could add loads of lights but you probably only control them from the work lights button I mean if you have lights all around the cab they're all going to be work lights you flick the switch put them on maybe you'd want to have front work lights and rear work lights disconnected so you know just, just the options there you have another four pins anyway you can do whatever you want with them just I don't think you can control servos with them and I don't think you can control uh, motor PWM but probably someone out there has wrote code that will allow you to do that that said though I'm controlling some of the lights from uh, to direct pins on the chip because obviously it's easier to do it that way but if you took those pins and put them on the uh, on the expansion chips then you know you'd have extra few pins and you can do PWM and you can do uh, servo control from them so 
though you could have more shovels if you wanted. So just as a, a kind of a recap, uh, with this quad motor board you have control of four motors. You have, this particular one only has six uh, expanded outputs but there's actually eight on the latest version of the board. Um, you have then another eight outputs from the uh, chip itself, so they're directly from the chip. And then you have a, a TX line as well, which basically means you could communicate to another chip, so you could basically repeat this again if you wanted. Um, you, know, you, have, you can kind of basically, once you have communication with other chips, you can have as many outputs as you want. It's kind of infinite. So that's basically a demonstration of that board in action, and kind of you can't get much more of a real life demonstration than actually using a model and showing you all the outputs that you can add. That's assuming you could fit all of this into the tractor. Well, you will be able to fit everything because most of it came out of it, but uh, probably wouldn't get the front link servo in there. I don't think there's enough space for that, particularly in this model because you have the loader, and that takes up pretty much the whole of the front of the model. But still, you have a, you have a huge amount of control there. So I'm thinking of maybe doing another Kickstarter with uh, these boards and probably I'd do it as a kit so maybe you'd get five of these, four of the uh, the single motor driver ones which would do basically all of your vehicles and then one of these uh, dual motors and you'd probably use that for maybe making a loading shovel or making a tractor like this with a loader. But, uh, possibly something I'm thinking of doing in the future, maybe in the next few months. Uh, let me know if you think that's a good idea, if you'd be interested in the boards. Uh, the other thing I was uh, thinking that with this, we'd uh, send the basic uh, controller as well, uh, try and keep things simple. Because if you're starting out, you don't really need a complicated controller like that. You keep things simple and just go with the basic ones until you've got used to it. By the time you're going to make something like this, maybe you want to make your own controller. For those of you who are maybe new to the channel, this is what we call the basic controller. So you have your forward and reverse, your steering, and then you have four buttons that uh, can control different lights and things like that, different functions. And uh, with these two buttons, we flick to uh, different kind of modes. So maybe this is drive mode, then you flick a button and then you're controlling the loader, then back to drive mode, or maybe you flick it and you're controlling the uh, the trailer or something like that. So you kind of it's a simple controller but you, you try and get as much functionality out of it as you can so basically the kickstarter idea would be one of these five of the control modules four of the single motor drivers and one of the double motor drivers so let me know what you think of that if it would be something people would be interested in i'm kind of interested in doing it because i haven't done i haven't never got a pcb fully assembled in a, a professional manufacturing facility so it would be kind of interesting to have done that for once just to see how it turns out and how the how you go about that type of thing but depending on how popular it is we might be able to expand on the whole thing and make something else like it would be a big job to make a tree uh, motor driver board I actually have a few from when I uh, made my uh, Komatsu I have a board that has three motor drivers on it for controlling an excavator so you know, there's lots of options we can do. Also, you might want this board without the NRF just to control a trailer or something. You don't need the radio. Or you could use the radio to control your trailers if you wanted. It's really up to you whatever way you want to do it. But what I mean by that is if your trailer only had uh, servos, you don't need the NRF. You don't need everything that's on this. You could get away with just the board like this. Just the chip. Because it can control the servos and you can take the communication lines and just connect them up like this to your vehicle. This one for example has three servos so you could replace replace that board with this board and you would get exactly the same result. So if you liked that video uh, make sure and hit the thumbs up and if you have any uh, opinions on the kickstarter idea let me know and I think that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching.